Hey folks, dude here, and um, I forgot one thing. Just give me one second here. Ah, uh, now we're ready to shoot a video. Just give me one second here. Hmm. Ah, no, oh, that's exactly what I need. Okay, today's video is um, well, somebody asked me a while back to do something about military uh backpacks and. I figured, what the hell, I may as well do such, so today's video is about the ALICE Backpack, namely the acronym for the All-Purpose Lightweight Individual Carrying Equipment Government Backwards Talking Clog Type of Nomenclature Name Thing. Annoying, but that's just the way they do stuff. Well, anyway, uh, this one is the uh, the afterwards of the uh, the aluminum packs. Uh, the backpack frames, also known in the business as the backpack bitch, because they would dig into your kidneys, especially Alice Large. Their um, their tear weight, which is basically just you know how much it weighs by itself, was borderline psychotic. I mean, they are not light frames. They'll kick your ass. Uh, these are the replacements. Uh, these came out from a company called Coleman, and they were supposed to fix a few things. And uh, it's something called Endoraflex. And Doraflex is basically the same stuff they use in like car bumpers, and it, it's actually a very good thermoplastic. It's got some flex to it. You know, you can see I actually got some flex going on there. Um, it's a pretty cool piece of kit, and the only reason why I did the printout there is because, you know, the acronym for Alice was driving me nuts, but that's neither here nor there. But you can see it actually does have more of an ergonomic thing. It actually kind of does conform more to the, you know, the human body, the lumbar, the what have you. Druthers, it breaks. You ever seen a car after it's been in a wreck? This stuff shatters like fine china. Okay, uh, aluminum pack frames usually don't break very well. Um, usually there's some give to them. And if you do bend an aluminum pack frame, if you're careful, you pretty much can straighten it out. Uh, what I would do at that point is if you did put a bend in it, I would get it very close to where it was originally, but I wouldn't put it back to where it was originally all the way because probably you got a crack built in there. And um, you're gonna make the tube shear. And if you do break the tube, then you gotta find a piece of wood. You gotta whittle it down to fit. You gotta stick it in there. You gotta drill a couple holes. If you got your Swiss Army knife, and you should have your Swiss Army knife, drill a couple holes. Stick it back together. Um, basically, you're splitting it up like a broken bone. Okay. Now the Endoraflex. Um, I've got one for well, fun and grins, and you know, put the appropriate words in there. I got it for fun and grins. Am I ever gonna feel with it? No, because it doesn't fit me. Um, why? Because I got about, I'm basically built like a walking triangle. It just doesn't fit me. I mean, I got about the better part of a 39 to a 40 inch waist, and I have about a 46 to a 47 inch chest. It, it just doesn't fit. I mean, you know, a lot of cars don't fit me. As a matter of fact, my CRX is a little bit of a tight fit, you know, in the driver's seat and the upper body because it's built for small Japanese, not for big Americans. Uh, I'm an overly big American, and well, I'm not fat, it's just the way I'm built. I mean, I'm built like, well, I'm built like most bodybuilders would love to have their backs look because I'm a walking triangle. Not good times. Okay, well, anyway, this is the Endoraflex. Um, if you're light dutying it and you want to basically save some weight, the tear on this thing is maybe, uh, I'm going to say probably about two or three pounds. It's, it's not blisteringly heavy. It's not going to really bust you up, but it is going to give you a very light, basic load to start out with. Uh, of course, you can attach your Alice Medium to this. There's so many multitudes of holes. You can dress this thing up however you wish. Um, you got the little flip thingy on the top. I, I guess that would be like for some kind of um, apparatus that came after me because I've never seen anything like this. I mean, probably what I would do is I would probably just, um, I would probably nip those guys off because it's just going to be something that's going to get in your way. You're going to bang your head on it when you, you know, you trip and fall. I, I would get them out of there because obviously that's the top. Obviously that's the bottom. Um, Here's where your straps tie in. You got numerous places to tie in all your straps. That's your Endoraflex made by Coleman. You could probably find them on eBay. I wouldn't go that route. Now the route that I would go, and um, uh, I've kind of done a hybrid. I basically built a hybrid. I found a civilian pack frame, and um, I added a couple military accoutrements, um, basically some civilian accoutrements, you know, pretty much I added, I added a kidney belt, you know, because you always want to have, this is a dirty little secret for any backpack, you put the weight on your hips, never on your shoulders, your hips are carrying the weight, the straps 
just keep the pack stable. They do not carry any of the payload. They keep the backpack stable. If you put the weight on your shoulders and not on your hips where your, you know, your body strength is actually the strongest, your legs are so much stronger than your upper body, you will wear yourself out prematurely. Don't do that. Now, here's the other thing too. Um, you notice this basically does have kind of a bastard ergonomic thing going on. Um, I mean, I really should readjust this, this rest right here, probably up a little higher. Um, I put tape on here because cold aluminum in the middle of winter time when you grab a hold of it oh man is it going to let you know and the problem is when you grab a hold of it you might not be able to let go of it so any place that there's exposed tubing i taped up uh, now you could do this with electrical tape and um i think the cats have been playing on this one because it's just well it's too much fun to chew on but um any place that you have exposed metal can grab you back especially if you have your hand coming out of a mitten or out of a glove and you have any moisture on you you're gonna stick you won't be able to let go tape your stuff up it'll give you about a half a second to go whoa, whoa, whoa that's too cold man and you get the chance to let go if you don't you're on there and your buddy's whizzing on your hand to get it loose yeah that sucks but it's the only way to get your hand off unless you got a pot of boiling water and then you got something else that it's no oh, it's a ready source of warm water and I'm gonna leave it at that but it's just something you just don't want to do all right well so basically, we had the Coleman frame, we had the uh, the civilian eyes aluminum backpack frame, and where I got the backpack frame was I cruised yard sales. The yard sale is the definition of removing crap from your house and putting it into somebody else's house. Do that. It'll save you so much time, trouble, and, well, okay, case in point. I'm driving along, uh, I believe I was driving a tow truck at the time. Uh, I was rolling along the eastern shore, and I looked over across Route 50, and I saw a yard sale. This is a section of Route 50 that basically was, you know, pretty much podunk enough that you could actually turn around and grab something if you wanted to. Yard sale. So I'm rolling along, rolling along, rolling along, rolling along. Stopped. Dude has got a badass silver compass. And I do mean a badass silver compass for like $3. I scarfed that up. I looked down a little further and I'm like, um, dude, what's that there? He goes, oh, that's a radio for an old Honda. And I'm like, uh, what kind of old Honda? He goes, uh, I think it came out my sister's old Acura or, or Accord or something. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Time to do a little research in the brain. Um, old Hondas basically had two radios. Uh, dude, how much do you want for that radio? He goes, uh, $2. And I'm like, um, $2. On eBay, this would be a $40 radio. Dude, here's your 5 bucks. Thank you very much. Down the road I went. Um, cruise yard sales. Okay, so basically what I did was I came up with a hybrid. I took the civilian backpack frame. And I know, i got to tape this one up. This one's still a work in progress. Um, I still have yet to fix up all the uh, the fasteners and what have you. I mean, you know, it's basically something I'm tinkering with. And I'm trying to get the fit right. Okay, but basically I did a small Alice. Okay, a small Alice on a civilian frame. And you can see how new this backpack is. This sucker, I, this thing has not been fielded. I mean, it's still got Irish pennants all over it. Um, that's a Marine Corps slang. That basically means you got loose threads hanging out from where they made the thing and they didn't cut them off. Those are your Irish pennants. And I can say that because I'm part Irish and you never mind, just don't go there. Well, anyway, the, uh, the backpack itself, if you look at it with enough shoot cord, it's a bloody damn perfect fit. I even got room up top for securing, securing on um, like my, back, my bed roll. Uh, I got plenty of room in the bottom for putting on a humongous sleeping bag uh, or other you know stuff that I could put on there. It does have... All the good backpack stuff. I think I actually need to work on this pad and, you know, change it around a little bit so probably this pad sticks more in. This is actually the upper pad that slips over the Alice frame, but modifying it slightly and uh, Moly gear especially, you're going to be able to make stuff fit in ways that you would never believe. Uh, Fastex fasteners, you can never have too many Fastex fasteners. Uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can hang on here if you do it correctly. Uh, all these straps and whatnot are pretty much damn near universal at this point. A one-inch strap is a one-inch strap. You can make pretty much everything fit anything. And, of course, is my ride-along all the time. And I do mean all the time. Would be your military compass. Why? Because they're good. And I got this thing when they were still fairly cheap. It is retired. It is a military compass. And, um, yeah, it, it was the real deal. You know, dispose of properly, blah, 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 blah. Contains tritium. If there's any tritium still doing anything in this thing at this point, I would be very seriously surprised because 
Um, the Half-Life in Tritium is about 10 years. It goes dull. The other 10 years, it goes really, really dull. Um, I don't even remember what the production date on this thing was, but let's just say the Tritium. Um, if it's farting out any emitters at this point, I'd be very seriously surprised. But there's a reason why it's got the... Uh, the compass case and it rides on board in a protected area is because that is a kick-ass backup you could do your line of sight you could do all your good stuff on it and um, it was one of the first things I installed on this backpack It's something I knew for a fact was going to be freaking excellent so I didn't have any second thoughts with using the one that I do currently have loose and putting it on this project um, it's a long time project I've been messing with it I'm probably gonna change out these nasty ass military style straps because they just don't feel good and uh, I'm probably going to go on and do other stuff. So anyway, the, uh, the long and the short on that one is basically because you're not in the service and you don't have to look like the 50,000 other guys standing beside you, you can make everything fit you to a T and tear it up how you like it. Now, um, got tons of cat hair out of here. <laughs> well, anyway, the, uh, the other cool thing is how many pockets does a Alice currently have? All right, and Alice has a sick amount of pockets. I mean, it's got the huge main. It's got three outsides. It's got the uh, the max pocket if you know where to find it. I mean, there's tons of stuff to be done on these things. Plus, you've got um, not so much on these. It's more on the other ones, the, the new Ormoli stuff. They're really good about putting strapping all over everything. But it's cloth. I mean, you could sew, you could sew anything on anything on anywhere and make it how you see fit to dress this thing up and... Well, you can make it fit anything that you want, as long as you're willing to grab the needle and the thread and put in the time and effort and do a little research. Because the newer stuff, okay, the newer stuff is covered with straps, and that's really, really cool stuff. The only downside is, is basically, how much do you really want to invest in um, new backpack technology if you could find these guys very cheap? And I mean, you go to like... Um, Copeland's or main military or I'll put a bunch of links in there for good websites uh, brigade quartermaster I mean, you know um, Galls uh, Maybe not Galls so much, but they're new stuff But if you look around a lot of the military surplus sites and you put in anything in Google You're gonna get a million flipping hits uh, if you want to PM me for like questions and stuff I'll be glad to answer you as always because well, that's just the way we are in this channel and um uh, so basically, the way you see fit is putting it together how you wish. Now, the reason why I used that frame as opposed to this frame, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, look look at the sheer tube diameter. It's no question. The tube on this is maybe about uh, five-eighths. This one's about an inch. No contest. This one's going to be much more strong. It's going to be able to take much more abuse. And to tell you the truth, believe it or not, it's not that much heavier. So if you find the older backpacks as opposed to the newer backpacks, this is more like a day backpack in my opinion in terms of the frame size. I would never stress this. This is probably roughly about as strong as that Enduroflex. And the um, that Enduroflex pack frame, I would never, ever trust for something long and drawn out because if it breaks, and you can ask anybody that's ever fielded with them, you're stitching it together with, um, well, 90 mile an hour tape, civilian version duct tape, and uh, shoot cord military version uh, shoot cord that's pretty much what you do and you're trying to get the thing back together because it's foobar and you got no way to fix it in the field with the exception of well and this is never recommended uh, heating up your uh, bayonet in the campfire and stitching it together by welding it you don't get caught doing that one it's never good times um, I can tell you for a fact though it didn't occur to me because we never fielded the crap in the Marine Corps. We stayed with the steel ones because we're gluttons for punishment. We want to bust our back, our bra uh, we want to bust our backs. Uh, and because the sergeant was very, very kind in making sure that we had enough physical therapy to carry it appropriately upon our suffering asses. Would I do that to anybody that I truly like? No. There's better equivalents out there. You don't have to go through government T-O-N-E. That would be the table of equipment and operation. Uh, also known as what stuff you got to what stuff you can utilize to what stuff you're carrying to what stuff you guys are humping. Even though you don't need it, carry it. Because it's on our T-O-N-E. It's on the list. You should be carrying it. Because you're good Marines and that's what you're going to do. Uh, Billy Bob, stop crying because you're humping the pig. And those of you who don't know what humping the pig means, the guys who are in the military are laughing their asses off now because you civilians are going... Why would he be having sex with a pig in the field? He wouldn't be doing that. That basically means he was carrying an M60 or he was carrying a machine gun. And uh, 
He was low man in the totem pole unless the guy was built like a, well, a football linebacker because the pig, pig's 18 pounds. Uh, well, 19 pounds, depending on how you're carrying an E3, E1, or what have you. But we didn't, feed, we didn't field E3s when I was in. We had E1s, and ugh, they were heavy. Not as, bad as, not as bad as the 240, but they were heavy. Um, the other major downside, of course, is how much ammo you are carrying. Your TONE says you guys got to carry ridiculous quantities. You're carrying ridiculous quantities. So, cat getting on my nerves again. So, you're carrying ridiculous quantities, and um, that basically means you got to put it somewhere. All right, now, if you look at the way the Dallas pack is set up, there's a shelf on the bottom. That basically means you're racking some ammo cans on there, and you're putting the weight right over your ass. Ugh, not good times. If you've ever humped, uh, well, usually you'd probably get away with carrying one. But that's, you know, what, 500 rounds or so, 800 rounds or so, and your average ammo can, I mean, the weight goes up very quickly. Before you know it, you're playing soldier, humping around your standard 100 pounds of gear. Why? Because they say you're supposed to. Do you need 100 pounds of gear? No. But for time and eternal in the U.S. military, we've been overloading our soldiers with too much crap. Now, the reason being is because um, there's a reason why you only use two different types of ammo in combat. It's because you know for a fact trying to get a hold of more 5.56 is not going to be easy. Trying to get a hold of more 308 slash 7.62 is not going to be easy. So if you got five different calibers, you are screwed. That's why the 6.8 doesn't do so good. That's also why the 6.5 doesn't do so good. That's also why any of the 6.5 millimeter cartridges they're now playing around with and they're going to give them to people doesn't do so good because you got two main uh, lines of ammunition that you got to try to hump into combat with three more different types of ammo Ugh, not good times well anyway so basically the uh the long and the short of a backpack is essentially for me at least build a backpack could i build it out of an alice pack yeah but i don't want to take a three pound weight penalty for something that's really not going to help me except drag my ass down later all right, folks, I'm going to tail this one off because I don't try to run my videos as long as some people. And notice, there is no conspicuous Duracoat jumping announcers on this. It's a backpack. It doesn't need it. It doesn't need, well, buttloads of other crap bolted all over it. And, of course, there's no sponsors screaming all over this thing because I don't do AdSense or partnership. All right, folks, uh, as usual here in the East Podcast, strong as they see it, as always, always,